Grass tetany is a nutritional and metabolic disorder associated with low concentrations of blood magnesium. Cows hold magnesium in their bones and muscles, however, they actually can't readily access and utilise these stores when needed. Grass tetany is a highly fatal disease due to nerve impulse transmission failure which causes the disorder. It is most prominent in late winter and early in the spring as forage starts to green up and grow rapidly. Magnesium is essential for optimal growth, reproduction and development. It is found in the animal's bones, teeth and soft tissues. Magnesium is not stored in the body, so it is important for cattle to meet their daily intake requirements. Dietary requirements of magnesium will vary due to cow live weight. The average desirable magnesium intake for cows is roughly 20 to 30 grams per day. Some magnesium is supplied by forage and feed, but the majority of magnesium is obtained in supplemental form, especially in high risk situations. This picture here is an example of magnesium supplement, which farmers may use to add magnesium to their animals diets. There are several ways to supplement magnesium in the cow's diet. Magnesium can be supplemented in the cow's water. For example, it can be added to the water trough as a soluble salt or a soluble magnesium solution. Pasture dusting with cow magnesium is very common. It should be dusted at a rate of 15 to 17 kg per hectare when the grass is damp. High magnesium licks can be used and are highly effective provided that all cows are getting them. Some farmers supplement cattle with extra forage at grass. These include hay, silage or straw. Placing a ratio of 50 to 50 CalMag molasses solution in a tub in the field for free access to stock is also another way of supplementing magnesium. However, the disadvantage of using this me method is that it has to be stirred morning and evening to prevent the CalMag from splitting. Cows are constantly losing magnesium in their urine, faeces and during milk production. Therefore, magnesium is a daily requirement in the cow's diet. Low magnesium in the blood can be caused by low levels of magnesium in their feed or reduced magnesium absorption. Grass tetany is caused by a diet low in magnesium, a diet with nutrient imbalances that interfere with magnesium metabolism and high levels of milk production. There are several contributing causes to grass tetany. Magnesium levels in forages are lower when nitrogen fertilisers are used. Cattle may have a reduced absorption rate of magnesium due to high rumen potassium and nitrogen. Low energy intake, fasting or sudden changes in feed can contribute to grass tetany. Bad weather, especially storms, can affect the animal's magnesium intake. Grass tetany can be caused by low intake of phosphorus and salt in the diet. We are now going to discuss the risk groups that are most susceptible to grass tetany. Grass tetany can affect all classes of cattle, however older lactating cows with calves younger than two months of age are most at risk. Magnesium needs are much higher for lactating cows as they are constantly losing greater amounts of magnesium during milk production. Very thin and overweight animals are also more at risk to the disease. Grass tetany is most likely to occur in beef herds in comparison to dairy cows. For example, Angus herds have the greatest susceptibility. Steers, heifers, dry cows and cows with calves older than four months of age and bulls are the least at risk of tetany. Quite often, clinical signs of grass tetany are not shown and the only clinical sign is when the animal has unfortunately died. Affected animals may become excitable during early signs of grass tetany. They may exhibit a wild stare with erect ears and appear blind. Some affected cows may become uncoordinated and tend to lean backward, stumble or potentially fall over. There are several progressive signs of tetany that must be observed. These include grazing away from the herd, irritability, muscular twitching in the flank, wide-eyed and staring, staggering, collapsing and in a coma. In less severe cases, the only signs may be a change in the character of the animal and difficulty in handling. Treatment of grass tetany varies depending on the clinical stage of the animal. If treatment is started one or two hours after clinical signs develop, the animal usually recovers quite quickly. However, treatment is not effective if it's delayed until the coma stage. 
To treat a cow with grass tetany, blood magnesium levels must be restored. The administration of an intravenous calcium and magnesium solution by a vet produces the best results. However, when time is critical, a calcium magnesium solution can be injected under the skin. It provides a high level of magnesium in the blood with only within only 15 minutes. Oral sources of magnesium can also be provided to affected herds to prevent relapses. These sources of magnesium include magnesium oxide powder dusted onto their feed or their pasture, magnesium lick blocks, and magnesium sulfate or soluble magnesium chloride added to their hay or their silage. The aim of grass tetany prevention should be to eliminate factors which reduce magnesium absorption and to provide a magnesium supplement in the cow's diet. There are many immediate actions that can be taken to prevent grass tetany in the herd. The first action is by increasing energy and roughage intake. Providing the animals with good quality hay and silage will increase their energy intake. Pellets and grain are another option if they are introduced carefully to the diet. Salt should be added to the animal's diet if they have no access to natural sources of it. Another immediate action involves moving lactating cows to high legume and high dry matter pastures. Providing shelter and reducing stress factors such as transport is also recommended. The most important and efficient action to reducing grass tetany is adding magnesium supplements to the animal's feed. The farmer could implement long-term strategies to reduce and prevent their herd from getting grass tetany. Correcting soil acidity with lime or dolomite, planting clovers in their pastures and applying phosphate fertilizers are some examples of long-term actions that can be taken by the farmer. It is recommended to limit the use of nitrogen applications until soil acidity is corrected and clovers are established. Planting tree lines for shelter is also another option. It is important to keep good records for future management and practices. It is important that the vet accurately diagnoses the animal with grass tetany as a significant number of diseases have similar signs. These similar diseases are grass staggers caused by filaris, perennial rye and annual rye toxicity, nitrate and nitrite poisoning, lead poisoning which is usually from discarded batteries, exotic diseases and locally occurring viruses and bacteria. Here is a quick overview of what grass tetany is. It is a result of a magnesium deficiency in the animal's diet. Clinical signs usually begin with nervousness and staggering and progress to falling, a coma or death. Grass tetany is always an emergency requiring immediate medical attention. Treatment consists of an intravenous administration of a magnesium calcium solution. The best prevention methods include keeping cattle off new grass until it's four to six inches tall and supplementing magnesium daily when conditions are favorable for grass tetany.